planning to have an uninterrupted electricity and water supply from solar energy in the Gambia and beyond. Worry no more, because Solar Enterprise will provide you with the solutions at reasonable cost. We have experienced personals who can install and advise you about your electricity and water supply with a warranty period. We have good quality solar products from North America and Europe. We provide services and sell products to individuals, organizations, institutions, private offices, communities, and government. These products are solar panels, batteries, charge controllers, inverters, water pump, water heaters, freezers, submissable pumps, and general solar accessories. Visit our stores at 48 Kariba Avenue and Brusubi Highway, or you can call us on 7657-479-980. 8483-340-9400 or 6359906. Are you thinking of owning your dream homes? EJ Investment is here for you. Secure our quality bungalows with two, three, or four bedrooms or our story buildings, three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans at our Sanyang Seaview Estate where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, schools, children daycare, and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, sonar panel, and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service, such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 3259-220. Or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic Microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic Microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832-151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you. Welcome to the brunch on Kerfatu Life. I am Lamin Cham and sit back to follow your weekly current affairs program on this channel. 
This week, we continue our coverage of the 2021 presidential elections, the aftermath, of course, of uh, developments that uh, happened uh, after the declaration of the results, which declared President Adam Barrow winner for another five-year term. Of course, there have been uh, developments such as election petitions, uh, among other things. We will also discuss other current affairs, for example, the police and the army, a mix-up or perhaps a misunderstanding as to the news of arrests of our men in our seas. We will discuss all that and give you updates. First of all, let me introduce uh, my guest in the studio, Lamin Damfa. He is the CEO and founder of CEPRAS, that is the Center for Policy Research and Strategic Studies. CEPRAS, well known in the period leading up to the elections for, wow, rather controversially predicting that the National People's Party of President Barrow is likely or was likely to win the elections. The polls, the polls, polls came twice. And, well, the rest they said is history, but of course, Mr. Dampha and his team are feeling vindicated that the results have come to pass the way they predicted. We will have a chat with him and get him answer some of the questions, doubts, if you like, which have been thrown to them since uh, they came out with the first poll. Now, I also with Sanaba Jaula, he is the Senior Program Officer for BA Kanyang. Bay Kanyang is an, a local NGO which uh, focuses on development, advocacy, and of course human rights issues. They too were involved among the civic society organizations who watched and observed the election process. We will discuss with him about uh, that and the state of human rights since 2017 and now. So gentlemen, welcome to the brunch. And and then, your, yeah, that's right, your mic is now on. Yeah, thank you very much, and it's a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you. Sanaba, welcome. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Cham. It's a pleasure to be here. Good. I hope you feel all right, because you are very concerned with equality. Hence, you, uh, uh, your, your organization's name, Be Kanyang. <laughs> yeah. Hope you are all, you are all, you are all right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. Um, let's talk to Mr. Danfa. All right. The elections are over. You and your group pioneered uh, something that really, um, I know, will we'll transform and, 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 and perhaps um, revolutionize um, election prediction or polls, uh, you know, polls, opinion polls in the country. Um, you twice during the periods in the campaign, you predicted that NPP is likely to win the elections. You even came out with, a, you know, a, a rather uh, descriptive, you know, description and distribution of where those victories <laughs> will be around the country. Now, much of what you have predicted have come to pass. But then, of course, you came under fire uh, at a time, people expressing doubt about your survey. You defended your methods. Uh, let me go back now to ask you, and I would like Mr. Uh, Jawala too, if he has any uh, you know, questions for you. Um, let's go back. When the results were declared, did you notice um, a total vindication or you still think that your analysis or your predictions could have covered areas that, that came in the results that you did not expect? Generally, how did you feel? Um, well, thank you very much, Mr. Cham. Um, well, opinion polls as they are, you know, always very controversial. Mm -hmm. So um, we are aware of that. Even at the time, we are conceiving the idea of organizing the opinion poll. Mm -hmm. um, we know the ramification, of course, you know, the sensitive nature of the whole exercise itself. Mm -hmm. Uh, but notwithstanding, you know, as a country, you know, um, of course, when the change of government came in, you know, our democratic credentials has definitely, you know, rise. And of course, opinion poll as such is also a very important indicator on our growing democracy as a country. Now, 
obviously when the the first results were released on the opinion poll you know um, making the NPP leading in the likely candidate to win of course there were mixed reaction of course you know those it does not favor you know were dismissive completely you know not only of our methodology you know and then there are lots of issues I mean we are uh, aware of that and then we are alive with it that um, you know those are the kind of reception perhaps you know we can we will expect bear in mind that um, Gambia has never done this kind of scientific pool in the past so to make people understand and believe especially on our methodology it's not going to be an easy task you know but again we, we are also on a mission to ensure that um, we do this perfectly and there is no way that um, we should make mistake you know with regards to how we conduct this poll so i mean um, when the the entire idea came up we thinking of how do we go about it especially jetting a frame mm -hmm. a sampling frame mm -hmm. that we can rely on and then try to make our sample and then get our respondent call them and then try to get the information that we are looking for mm -hmm. that, that was quite difficult mm -hmm. you know we thought of you know different you know methods frames to use but under the circumstance it was not possible but the best frame at the time we could use was the integrated household survey mm -hmm. you know which had telephone numbers assigned to the household I mean, that itself was, you know, um, a random sample that was done by GBOS, mm -hmm. and we felt that um, it is a quite a credible data mm -hmm. that we can rely on. Mm -hmm. So without hesitation, we have also had to look at, you know, the voter register, for example, mm -hmm. you know, to use the proposal of that, mm -hmm. you know, so that we also take into account, mm -hmm. you know, the number of voters in each constituency in the country. Mm -hmm. So. Those are some of the dynamics we look at, and of course, even in terms of gender and the youths, are all been factored mm -hmm. in our sampling. Mm -hmm. Even though, you know, we had issues along the way not to meet the IEC registered number of, you know, um, um, female in mm -hmm. terms of 52.5% uh, mm -hmm. to our 32%. Mm -hmm. But even though there are some of those problems, research definitely had to come up with those kind of challenges. But the the method itself had been you know very robust to ensure that um, we are able to do these things you know very well so i mean when the results came out i mean it was shocking to some quarters you know bear in mind that in the gambia the the popularity of you know parties was largely based on crowd counts and of course up losses you know you know personal contacts among others mm -hmm. so there was no scientific data as such in trying to determine you know the popularity of candidates so it becomes difficult for people to understand and appreciate and if you look at the crowd for example mm -hmm. that come out you know during campaigning and you look at the number of registered voters in the country you cannot compare the two mm -hmm. you know I, I always say this the number that come out is not always even up to hundred thousand yes if i'm not too generous to so that even if you combine the uh, crowd of all the parties yes parties. so you can see that there are significant number of people who do not come out mm -hmm. during campaign time so who do we know their, you know where their allegiance is in terms of in terms of their you know vote mm -hmm. so these are issues we ask ourselves you know otherwise if we really want to rely on what we see mm -hmm. sometimes it can be very deceptive mm -hmm. so that is why as a country this is what we need we need research to show we need data mm -hmm. and try to show us this information mm -hmm. and, and, and 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 quite interestingly myself mm -hmm. you know i have attended you know quite a number of um, 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 campaign, mm -hmm. you know, both UDP and of course NPP, mm -hmm. who were the front runners at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I remember when I was in Gunjur, I looked at the crowd and I took time, you know, on the sideline, I spoke with some, you know, some people inside to see where their allegiance are. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I, I have I have had that kind of personal, you know, contact with people. Mm -hmm. You know, the very night I called my colleagues, I said, uh, let us look at, um, in terms of our poll, Gunjur, you know, weak party dominates. And interestingly, when we look at it, UDP, you know, had a very convincing, you know, convincing lead in Gunjur, inside Gunjur alone. You see, so, so I said to myself, you see, data that you know itself is quite, is quite, is quite interesting, and it can reveal lots of things. And even in our in our sampling, we do not even look at the ethnic, you know, dynamics. You know, looking at like Mandingas being the largest number. So in our poll, let us let us interview more Mandingas. No, we have not done that. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the data set that we have, when we this uh, you know aggregate them into ethnic groups, mm -hmm. we realize that Mandingas come on top. Mm 
you know that also shows how you know credible our data is in fact it shows in terms of the strength of angry group in the country mm. so this we are quite revealing from our data and then uh, there are a host of issues if you like mm -hmm. that came came out during our data collection uh, and which you know if you look at it you you know that definitely this is true okay. so when i saw this okay. you know i said to myself no this cannot lie mm -hmm. you see then our second pool came i said look why not we go and get to different set of respondents this time around mm -hmm. to see how things play out mm -hmm. we did that you and know you in fact similar. similar trend also come up now if you add up the first sample and the second sample together mm -hmm. you know it, it tells you exactly what is happening okay. you understand so you know therefore if you look at you know our methodology itself mm -hmm. itself uh, i mean you, you cannot have doubt if you really understand and we even took time to try to release mm -hmm. part of our you know methodology how we go about it exactly. even though you know some of the information we might sell for our own you know for ourselves not okay. to disclose, disclose everything us, yeah. you know but eventually you know it come out like this and when the results came out uh, i was not surprised mm -hmm. because i've seen this coming okay um okay you may have predicted your prediction may have come right but still st there are still people who believe there are gaps like you conducted this survey using telephone so a lot of people were wondering how effective or accurate authentic would be just mere random telephone calls asking people which party they prefer how can that translate into an authentic concrete data as as as, as you have claimed yeah. has happened yeah that's that's a very why do you think that method is, is effective now that's that's a very important question you see i mean um, we are in covid so we look at it very closely you know some of the you know problem that may i have if you want to go face to face in fact even before we get to this survey you know we have had opportunity to you know we've conduct some number of i mean surveys using telephone in fact um, one thing that motivated us was some of our counterparts like c4ad that is center for evaluation and development based in germany mm -hmm. so they are normally do impact evaluation mm -hmm. and then they introduce that uh, we go into telephone survey mm -hmm. you know i mean yeah uh, with the technical bus stopping you know and some of the mm -hmm. you know techniques mm -hmm. our our inhumanity to be exposed to mm -hmm. you know it's a very interesting area i mean the world is moving very fast yes. you know i mean it cannot be business as usual mm -hmm. is it uh, uh, previously we used to get these um you know questionnaires on a piece of paper we go around yeah i mean they are laborious most of us are you like know, that you know now we've now changed even at our center at cepras yeah. we use tablets you know right. and this tablet in fact we have our own server cloud where we use survey solution you mm -hmm. know software you mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. put in the system and in real time you know as the data is being collected you also analyze the data and then try to you know check in terms of accuracy and other quality control mm -hmm. So is it, it it give you real time and interestingly you know the moment those data are been collected as well you can see where there are issues mm. these are things that we've been taught by our partner organization like C4ED mm -hmm. so it it every day they will do a review and send their report to see where there are issues you need to fix this area there's inconsistency here and there mm. is it so already that know how has already been transferred to Cepras this gave us the motivation look let's go into telephone survey and in fact it become easier when we had that frame that had all the numbers and that was most recent all the numbers how did you combine the numbers well these are when the um, the the, the integrated household survey was conducted yeah. they also collect alongside that's gibos right uh, gibos yeah. alongside their telephone yeah. number numbers. and even our survey itself yeah. the moment we interview we also request for mm. a number that you are always reachable, reachable. on and in fact um, if you look at it itself uh, the survey itself when we call mm -hmm. a respondent we had we you know we have to take time to explain to them how we get their number and what we are doing mm -hmm. you know for them to understand, understand what we are doing exactly okay. then we seek their consent we, we will sort their consent mm -hmm. if they accept it mm -hmm. then we go ahead and if you look at our you know questions also it looked at source of issues mm -hmm. you know not limited to the intention to vote or the likely candidate to win mm. you know you know these are questions of national interest and normally the the interview might take up to 45 30 or even one hour 
So wow, I yes. who, who pays that bill? <laughs> of course, well, surprise. <laughs> surprise! Our funders pay that bill. How do you do? You use different <laughs> networks for different networks. Exactly, we use different networks. Q cell for Q cell, Q cell for Q cell. Exactly. So that is a strategy that we use. Mm -hmm. So we have our supervisor who ensure that he give, you know, he will always give airtime to our enumerator to right. ensure that they are able to do their work. And this is done, you know, in a call center that we created. Created. Our cells are there. So everything is open, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I mean, they are not I, on their I, own. I, I suppose you did a lot, you you, tr you recorded some and have to transcribe them. Oh. Uh, no, in fact, what is a, as this interview is conducted is being put into put the into system, system where the system will pick it. Ah. So at the level of the supervisor, he will check, try to see issues. Mm -hmm. Then it comes to headquarters. Headquarters is for the the consultants themselves. Mm -hmm. We also look at at our level to see what is happening. We look at the data, look at it critically mm -hmm. to, before. You know, we endorse it. Mm -hmm. You know, when it is endorsed now, you know, you are now free. You go ahead as in your money to to contact other 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 respondents. But of course, it is without challenge. Mm -hmm. We okay. let's know. let's talk about let's let's still deal with the successes first, uh, and then we'll come to the we'll come to the challenges. So, when it uh, dawn on you that you have uh, really uh, known laboriously or accurately accumulated this information and believe in the in, in, in the results it is given you. When you published it, you mentioned there have been mixed we all know there have been mixed reactions. Yeah. The people who seem to have been favored by the report, maybe not the president or his uh, or senior official, but then some who support the party say, Oh, and we saw that this is the most credible uh, you know polls ever. Whereas the opposition said uh, how can these people be crazy with this kind of uh, thing? So, did you, what would like to wonder, did you have any personal or as a group contact from any of the key stakeholders when the, when the election, when the, when the polls, when you release the polls? Did anybody contact you from NPP officers or UDP officers complaining or NPP congratulating? Uh, no, we have not uh, received that. In fact, uh, uh, when we release the results, you know whether it is NPP or UDP, they have not contacted us directly. Okay. Try to load their complaint as such. Or we've to also, yes, if we, we we also learn from the media. Yeah. You know their the endorsement reactions. and of course their you know rejection. Mm -hmm. You know of of, of the pools. Okay. But they do not directly mm. contact us. Even though um, during the release of our first poll, we invited um, all the political parties. Oh, you, you invited. Know, them. Yes, even though the invitation went uh, you know pretty late mm -hmm. you know because ourselves we were trying to put you know a lot of things what were you trying to achieve by inviting them i mean uh, the whole idea was uh, of this opinion poll is not try to give undue advantage of any um, um candidate over the other mm. but the whole idea is i mean so, so that's textual when you have a poll right in the middle of the campaign yeah. that's don't you think that's what lend credence to suspicions that are you not trying to favor psychologically one side at a time? Didn't you think? Didn't you, don't you think your results could could inadvertently, even you know, even inevitably or inadvertently, uh, result in such a way, like uh, giving a psychological boost to the other side? Well, if you look at you it, you may not intend it. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, but if you look at it, the first poll came in before the campaign be, before campaign starts. Ah. Now, I mean, that, and of course, when the first poll came out, we have seen, you know, in terms of uh, undecided voters was, you know, quite big. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we felt that um, uh, in, in run-up to elections, for example, mm -hmm. maybe two weeks before voting, mm -hmm. could be a best time to gauge mm -hmm. people's own perception. perception. You know, you're able to judge that they have now make up their mind, Minds. and you know, and then they can speak freely to us, yeah. actually, the candidate they want to vote. Mm -hmm. So we felt it was the right time. Mm -hmm. and, and bear in mind that now this is the time political parties are also selling their agenda mm -hmm. to the electorate, mm -hmm. you know. And in fact, if you look at it, one of the questions we, we have asked mm. is what are some of the factors you consider before you even vote for a candidate? Mm. And one of the options that came out mm. was the campaign promises and so on. So we say now people must have heard from different political parties and now they are now decided what to vote. Mm. Even though others might, just like you've been, you have indicated, think that it might, you know, inadvertently give advantage to a certain group. Mm. 
I mean, you know, if, if that has happened was never intended as yeah. such. But our thinking at the time was, I mean, it would have been the best time to, I mean, gauge people's honest opinion as far as, you know, issues of national interest is concerned. So, therefore, if, um, 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 if polls are conducted at that time, you know, very close to elections, so a lot of things could have been, you know, looked at by the, you know, the potential voters, you know, and now they have made their decision that uh, this is the party that they are going to vote for. So that, that was the actual, you know, uh, I mean, reason why we, we, we did that, even though I have said, you know, we're going to do another one to gauge how far as the incoming president, you know, in terms of his promises, mm -hmm. you know, whether he's up to the tax to mm -hmm. deliver. Mm -hmm. You know, this is going to be another interesting poll that yes, we are going to we are going to do in of hundred days the, of the new president. Wow, hundred days in power. Perhaps soon you will fall out with uh, those, those who think <laughs> took you favor. Them. That's that's how researchers or journalists work. It's always yeah. uh, today they approve you, tomorrow they said you are a hypocrite. Uh, now you mentioned that a lot of people pick on these predictions, which which party will win. But you said there's a whole lot of information you gathered which are not necessary that which mean many people actually oversighted or didn't even look at yeah. what are those important information data you come across in yeah. the process i mean we've we've looked at for example you know the chances of a peaceful election okay you know these are issues if we've looked at okay. you know peaceful election and ah. if we and many people do not project that but did you say there was going to be violence or? Uh, no we don't but because if you look at that the the, the response from the people mm -hmm. You know, I mean, between you have, you know, over fifty percent mm. who say that there are, you know, um, between seventy-five to hundred percent chance that there will be peace. In ah, the country. Between seventy-five to hundred. Hundred percent. Ah. So that is, you know, uh, you know, I believe that um, Gambia is a yeah. peaceful country, so we continue ah. to enjoy our peace. So those are investments that came, and, and even election with COVID. Okay. You know, we talk about people. We even ask whether because of COVID mm. the election could election be postponed. Mm. And what are going to be the ramifications, some of the dangers, okay. if IEC decide to, I mean, uh, postpone the election? Mm -hmm. So this question was asked in the first poll. Mm. You know, try to send a message to IEC mm -hmm. what people are saying. Say, yeah. uh, and eventually, people said that would be very dangerous yeah. for our country for election to be postponed. Yeah. So that is another place where IEC could take. Yeah. I mean, we also ask, I mean, uh, questions on uh, uh, even the performance of government mm -hmm. in terms of. You know, um, economy, um, security. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, and other host of questions. And it, and, and 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 how many people give them high mark? Or well, it they, they, it, they, it was it was it was mixed. In fact, I, I remember this question was asked to me by Alaji. He said, you yeah. know, with the kind of endemic corruption and other issues here, yes. but we've seen Barrow went ahead and to try to you know you know swipe the polls, so, yeah. swipe the poll. So I mean, you know, I mean, the questions we we ask now. Yeah. How how do we genuinely vote? Mm -hmm. You know, is it on policies or personalities? Okay, and we are coming to that. Right. Mr. Jawala, would you do you would you observe anything that you want him to clarify? Yeah, the, um, the their polls were very interesting, mm -hmm. and uh, even well before the commencement of the campaign, mm -hmm. the force that they've released, um, it was obvious that all of us were not going to agree because uh, it was going to be a favor for the older side mm -hmm. and some would feel that it is not in their interest mm -hmm. but again um, that is what data would always show and one thing that i have observed and uh, i would always want to question mm -hmm. is dating back to the history that we are coming from mm -hmm. uh, from dictatorship mm -hmm. the fear that people have when they are on phone mm -hmm. with a person that they don't know oh. so if such a data collection method is deployed um, knowing just our recent history mm -hmm. that who is likely to win and obviously we know that I am on phone even when they have discussed that I am this, I work for this, I work for that. So obviously it could also remind them of our history, just our recent history and that may not necessarily be the information that they would want to give but for the fear that it could be used against them at other time so this was a data collection method that i have always questioned to say that telephone calls 
even though technology is advancing. Mm -hmm. But at uh, time, I don't think it is the best option that they could have used because mm -hmm. uh, it will always remind people. But again, um, even in the second polls that they've released, mm -hmm. we've seen that, okay, the candidate likely to win continued to be the NPP. Mm -hmm. But again, there were other issues that they were asking in the poll as to what they likely to vote based on, mm -hmm. um, based on policy things and also. Mm -hmm. But during the campaign period, We've seen a lot of ethnic mobilization and stuff. Mm -hmm. But majority in their polls said they're going to vote based on policies. Mm -hmm. They're going to be, uh, vote based on Progress. the manifesto of different candidates. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm going to make this as an allegation, sort of. Mm -hmm. Because for them, theirs is scientific. The yeah. data is already provided that these people said they're going to do this. Mm -hmm. Since there is no other research that is conducted to say that Gambians in 2021 voted based on ethnic lines, mm -hmm. based on other things that their research did not mm -hmm. talk about. Mm -hmm. I would say that the campaign was more on ethnic mobilization, okay. regional mobilization and stuff. Okay. So that alone, uh, that is why I have it conflicting with the data that they have provided, that Gambians majority of them said they're going to the polls and vote a candidate who has a manifesto. Mm -hmm. So that too, I would want to ask Mr. Gazama how we they, Mr. Um, Damfa, sorry, how we reconcile these two that the data is saying that Gambians are going to vote on this and the allegation now in town. In fact to be that, fair to be fair with him, not just yeah. recently he uh, after the elections, mm -hmm. uh, I mean he uh, made his opinion known that uh, the data after the elections, after analyzing the results, uh, they, they, they confirm what you said, that uh, um, tribal voting manifested, was manifested a lot in the elections. But let's put it to the yeah. house's mouth. Um, yeah. So uh, he's trying to say that, okay, there might have been other issues, but it is clear that people voted on tribal lines at the end of the day. Is that, uh, is that an overwhelming factor, or is just one part of uh, reasons that the result went uh, this way. Yes, um, he, he has made a very important comment and question. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just want to pick up first from the telephone Tele aspect. Yes. yes. Now, I mean, <coughs> I agree with him, you know, from the era we came from, you know, dictatorship yes. to, I mean, democracy, still Gambia is still very young, yeah. you know, in terms of our, our democracy. However, um, um, one thing you should also I mean, uh, bear in mind, uh, maybe it's important that uh, I made a point clear. Mm -hmm. Even though sometimes, you know, telephone, telephone call, you know, can be quite sensitive. Mm -hmm. In fact, the idea was, in each, uh, was one of the things to do, you know, in research, we have what you call onboarding. Mm -hmm. You know, you go out, you know, talk to people that um, we are organizing a pool and they should expect, you know, um, calling them you know, soon to ask questions on different issues. Mm -hmm. You know, even though that was not done, you mm -hmm. know, which I have highlighted mm -hmm. initially in other media platform, mm -hmm. that uh, are one of our shortcomings that we have agreed. Now, we are also very careful in terms of how we distribute our enumerators. Mm -hmm. So we ensure that, like, if you like phony, we ensure that the enumerator that we go to phony will be one of them mm -hmm. who can speak Jola, and then there'll be that kind of, you know, relationship and ownership. You understand that is a strategy that we employed. Mm -hmm. We have a Sarawli man in URR, mm -hmm. you understand who we call them, you know. And then, even before we start this interview, we ensure that our enumerators try to build mm -hmm. that relationship, you know, that relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, you are speaking their language, you understand each other. So, there is some element of trust already. So, there is freedom. You understand? Oh. Yes. And is it who to win, the likely candidate to win, is coming almost at the la last... Last. That's know, the, the last result. Of, yes. Uh, the last question. So, That's part yes, of the question. question will be asked. And some of them are quite, co you know, crafty. You know, they are very crafty. Okay. You know, they can ask questions in a way. You know, after building the reason, they ask a question. Um, uh, so, how do you think, who do you think, you know, putting on who is going to win this election? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's not going to be easy. Then. So, is he yes, trying to, like, try. <laughs> you know, judge them? So, I mean, you the method them. employed... Yeah has been very, very effective and very successful. And that is why, you know, the results came in the way it came in. Personally, I, I, I paid a very good attention to these two questions because they are very, very sensitive. Mm -hmm. So the fear of telephone, people not speaking their mind is not there. Mm -hmm. Honestly, people were, in fact, at some point, they want to engage the enumerators over 
other issues that are not part of our question. I see. So I always tell my members, look, be very tactical. Tell them, oh, we congratulate you, thank, thank you for bringing out that, but we are making a lot of calls, so please, you know, in a way you don't, you don't. So, so, I mean, that means, of course, that a lot of progress have been made, as he feared, from 2017 now, in yes. terms of freedom of expression. Exactly. Freedom of... A uh, lot of improvement, and people speak their mind. And those who oppose government, they will say it openly. Mm -hmm. Openly to our enumerators. Exactly. It's quite, quite interesting, even though there are some you know, a few issues, because especially you want to you call in the rural area, for example, you want to speak to a female respondent, mm. you know, some of them may not agree. They said, no, my husband is my here. Husband, so yes, that's so that, that has even resulted in you know, having a lesser, yeah. a lesser response from women. from women. And that is why ah, we had okay. only 32. I Those see. are some returning we had. Oh, and now, I with see. regards to... So even that, because of culturally, of course, yes. anything that comes, oh, my husband is here. Yeah. <laughs> we are asking, this one is asking for you. And that is why, <laughs> that is, there is a deliberate question in our questionnaire to ask, mm -hmm. who influenced your decision for voting? I see. We also try to see, you know, yes, try to where do are some, they, where are they some, independent? Cross, some cross tabulation to see, yeah. you know, what kind of effect will that have in the overall. Oh, right. So there are a lot of things we look at. And even in terms of asking questions, what factors you look at, majority of them talk about campaign promises. Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. That is what we will say. In the Gambia, we agree that there is tribalism, but people don't talk about it. And mm. our data has revealed that. Uh -huh. You know, deliberately we do not publish that because of the sensitive nature. Of it, yeah. I, and I avoided talking about it mm. until after election. Okay. It was at standard interview that I made that Claire. declaration. For made the first time. That, you know, when you look at our data, Mm -hmm. And you know we disaggregate into ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. You see that, I mean, uh, Mandingas were divided mm -hmm. between UDP and NPP, but majority of them are, are for UDP. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like two is to one. Mm -hmm. You know, you also have other Mandingas for SFL and other candidates. Okay. But the other tribe, it was massive, massive in the sense that over ninety percent of other tribe all went to NPP. We have seen that, and even, even prior to election, I've seen that, yeah. and, 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 I, and I knew, you know, where the election is heading to, I see. you know, going by that trend yes. that I saw, and I was not surprised that that what was manifested, what manifested in the election. So the data is very rich, you know, you are just limited to what you see. Yes, yes. yes. I mean, there are other host of things you can analyze from that data, from that data. which we would not even talk about. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, that's right. You're so that is why scientific research, nobody should joke with it. Absolutely. Yes. Now, Cephas and your research, obviously, for, for, for all intents and purposes, and for what we have now known and accept, Cephas is here to stay. You just hinted that you intend to conduct another one in the next in the next hundred years, okay, in the first hundred years of the hundred days of uh, hundred days of the new regime. That is, um. So Cephas is here to stay. Let me ask you, do you intend to conduct this kind of opinion polls and elections throughout the election cycle? Yes, in fact. We uh, have the National Assembly, we have the local government elections. Yes, and um, uh, I've said that the idea is for Cephas to continue. Um, it's a milestone. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that is why I said we cannot afford to have it wrong. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, the endorsement from, from across the board went we were vindicated, you know, it's enough motivation for Cyprus to go all out to ensure that it becomes, you know, a culture within the Cyprus organization mm -hmm. to ensure that in every election cycle that we conduct poll, we can assure Gambian that Cyprus will continue mm -hmm. to be uh, an institution for opinion poll in this country and we will continue to be professional as always to ensure that we give unbiased and a fair, and a fair analysis of elections in this country. We continue to do that. And, and then people should be rest assured that uh, we cannot in any way be swayed by any party or whatsoever. But we continue to work in a professional way to ensure that, you know, I mean, it's part, it become part of the Gambian culture. We can assure that. Let's, uh, let's try to check that uh, independence that you're talking about um, by trying to tell the people, what is your source of funding? Where do you get the funding? Because this is where people, your critics, would say, well, you know, uh, uh, perhaps they've been funded by one side or the other. How does Cypress make money? Well, um, you see, when the Cypress was launched in 2016, mm -hmm. I always say this, we could not do any meaningful research at that time. Mm -hmm. One is because of political 
climate at the time, and of course, you know, our accounts were on, were zero. Mm -hmm. In fact, they were in negatives. Mm -hmm. Nothing absolutely happening. So, I mean, we, we are working, trying to network to see, mm -hmm. you know, and luckily in 2017, when there was change of government, Afrobarometer, you know, came in to Cyprus, you know, we be there, and then we become successful. And then that was the first assignment that was given to Cyprus to conduct uh, a perception survey mm -hmm. in the country in the round seven of Afrobarometer, you know, study. And that was um, a, a huge success, mm -hmm. Cyprus, as a national partner, was responsible for recruitment, training, and of course, deployment analysis of the data. Even though we have the technical bus stopping from the Afrobarometer team, you know, when that results came out, and in the, you know, in their 28th anniversary in Johannesburg, mm -hmm. Cyprus was greeted as the best newcomer. You ah. know, we were given awards in, in South Africa, and then that further motivated us okay. to go in. So from then in, we started working with both local and international yeah. partners. Mm -hmm. You know, we've worked with, you know, government institution, private, you know, with host of areas, UNDP, UN system, you know, World Bank. I mean, we've also fought link with reputable organization, you know, across Africa and the world and Europe and, and in America. Mm -hmm. We work with C4E, I said, is the, you know, impact evaluation center in Germany. Mm -hmm. They are well known for that. In fact, we did a study on, I mean, the impact evaluation on the returning migrants. Mm -hmm. We have also done studies on COVID with sponsors from IRI and other institutions. You know, Cyprus, you know, it become a fast moving thing, mm -hmm. you know, for Cyprus. So we had that kind of, um, you know, trust and, and, and uh, from the international clients. People were calling mm -hmm. from different, even in depth center, you know, in Rwanda, in Kenya, you have the crop in Togo. Wow. They, all, they all reach out. The Ellen Johnson Salif Foundation, President Foundation in Liberia, mm -hmm. reach out, you know, on women issues. So there are hosts of research that Cyprus conduct. You know, you can name them. This particular research, you know, even before we get into opinion poll, we had funding from National Endowment for Democracy. Okay, you're coming to the point now. Where how you get the funding? Based in U.S. Okay. They first funded us mm -hmm. on the failed constitution. Okay. And then when that failed, we had to, you know, change into voter education. Voter and we went, we, we crisscrossed the country. Mm. You know, then we realized that people in the provinces, people outside are well informed mm. politically. Ah, so then, you know, we asked, I, I just asked my colleague, why not we organize an opinion mm. poll, for example, you know, to organize. So this is where the, the whole idea came up. Mm. And then, you know, we, you know, contacted NED, National Endowment for Democracy, yeah. sent a proposal. And of course, without hesitation, they trusted us, they accepted. You know, in fact, we even wanted to initially to organize an exit poll, you know, but we looked ah, at it quite no. sensitive. Uh, sensitive. We said, let us put that, let us grow, you know, you know, step, by step, step by step, and then we go. So our, this project is funded by the National Endowment for Democracy. That's and then net. Yeah. net. Mm. They, they, they've already committed over $60,000 wow. for this project. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Sanaba Jaula yes. of BA Kanyang, you, your organization to part of your activities, was of course, to uh, the observation of the recent election among the within, uh, I mean, inside the SEO coalition. Um, let me take you through to the election process. What were the key points that you observed during the process in terms of its integrity, you know, credibility? Uh, from the voting process right down to uh, the declaration of results and even after because like we come into that we have an election petition pending in the Supreme Court etc we, we, we are expecting a lawyer to put us through as to uh, what that means what is apparently not yet in the studio but how have been Bay Kanyang's observation um, well I must say the 2021 elections was a quite interesting one. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the fact that the civil society, including Bay Kanya, mm -hmm. have been following the process from day one of it, which is we've observed the registration process. And uh, even during the registration process, mm -hmm. um, lack of funding was something else. Mm -hmm. But then we were able to strategically look at it this way, that every phase of the registration process we were engaged and see how the process was done. And uh, immediately the registration process was closed. Um, our, our report was that 
it was a fair registration process. Mm -hmm. And this was also confirmed by even the primary players in it, that is the political parties. Mm -hmm. Because for the fact that uh, there were no reports of foreigners being registered, mm -hmm. uh, minors even at some point we, we said minors have been registered at some uh, registration centers. Mm -hmm. But again, um, coming to the so now, um, closely to the election day, we have also observed the nomination process. And uh, we could generally say that it was also a fair one. Uh, for those that were rejected, um, their nominations were rejected. At some point, we, we've realized there were procedural gaps that were not met and that have led to the rejection of certain candidates. But for other candidates too, um, they knew, like any one of us, that their um, nominations were not going to be reject, uh, accepted mm. for the fact that the primary requirements that they were supposed to meet, mm. they did not meet those things. So I found it difficult to say at a time before who would be disqualified or not, because, you know, if you listen to any one of them, you think they are the next president. Yeah, they and because nobody will admit their inadequacies. Or, yeah, or, and but from the get go, yeah. um, they were not honest at some point okay. to those that would want to elect them. Okay. But then we knew very well that some were not qualified. So they just pretend. They, they, yeah, the requirements were there for everybody to read and understand mm -hmm. that somebody with a dual citizenship cannot qualify uh, oh, okay, to yes. the presidency. Yeah, cool, so if you knew very well that you have a dual citizenship and yeah. you're telling us that there is a process that you're running. And obviously, you know that you're not telling your electors the truth. Mm -hmm. So we knew they were going to be rejected. So only uh, for the nomination process where we flagged to say that this process could have been done better mm. was the public scrutiny. Okay. Um, okay. What has been communicated to the public, especially to the media and the civil society, mm -hmm. and what has been found on the ground were basically yes. different things. Yeah. That there was going to be a public scrutiny. And our expectation is that we were going to look at it and be informed and also be able to share what has been uh, observed at that process only to be told that you're going to be given this amount of minute mm -hmm. and this is what you can spend to say when you have over 23 candidates to look at yeah. so that process we flagged it to say that this could have been done better right, yeah. so but the whole election process we have also observed and we looked at a lot of different issues and there were reports that were coming gradually uh, when the setting of polls was done at 12 midday mm. we were able to release a report mm. to say what has been done even before the voting has started mm. but again what has also been done during the voting from that eight o'clock to the 12 o'clock the process how fair has it been mm. well, well how iec is able to conduct themselves within the law okay. and also within their electoral laws as well so all that process what we have observed um, could be something that any other person could challenge. Mm. But for, for, for us, we have found those processes to be very fair, very transparent, and credible as well. So our assessments they were basically we looked at what our critical incident is actually looking at, mm. but also the other forms that we have. Polls, what time they were closed, um, what time they were open, but how was the setting also done? But again, what were the people in, uh, involved? at the setting of the polls. Mm -hmm. we, we've realized that almost every polling station that you go to, you meet political party agents there, mm -hmm. also observing the electoral process. Mm -hmm. So not just as observers, mm -hmm. but also party agents were also present to see the process for themselves. Mm -hmm. But again, even before the commencement of elections at 8 o'clock, the IEC officials in most of the polls that we go to at that 8 o'clock, mm -hmm. they were very transparent with the process because the drums were shown to the public that were there at the time mm. to say that these drums are empty and the agents that were also there, they were counted the number of marbles that were given mm. and compare it to the voter list. How many marbles are given? What is the number on the voter list? Mm. So all that process uh, in our report, mm -hmm. we said it is a free, mm. fair process okay. and we found the process to be very transparent. So you then you must then be wondering then uh, when you hear of election petitions uh, questioning those very details. Well, we are no judges, no lawyers, but uh, do you feel uh, surprised that uh, anybody uh, have you know problems with the 
credibility, so to speak, of the results, uh, given <laughs> what you have observed? Um, well, on election day, I, I, I am of the belief that our election is such so that mm -hmm. I don't think it could be rigged on election day. Election day. So if if it is any there were any irregularities, mm -hmm. I don't think it has happened on election day. Mm -hmm. But again, I would have to say, as local observers and even international observers, we are not monitors. Exactly. So there there is this difference of being an observer and also a monitor. At some point, we only looked at what is visible to us. We I present mm -hmm. our findings based on things that are visible yeah, okay. to us. Okay. So if there is also another party that says otherwise, yeah. um, that cannot discredit the, the report mm -hmm. that, that we have published as civil society okay. or even as, as, as an institution. Mm -hmm. So all along, we were doing an observation. Yeah, okay. And this report also talked about the, uh, the observations that we have done. Okay. So I, I, I am surprised based on the observations that we have done, mm -hmm. that somebody could say that there was uh, election malpractice. Mm -hmm. But even if there was, mm -hmm. uh, it is not to the knowledge of the civil society. Mm -hmm. And even if it is found to be true that there were irregularities, yeah. there were, uh, the election was rigged, mm -hmm. that cannot also discredit the, the data, that, uh, the report that we have yeah, also provided. Yeah, yeah, so because our role was only to observe, observe the election. And what do you and observe? Yes. Definitely, so far, it's above the world. Or yes. Or or so we, we were not basically monitoring. So if political parties were doing the monitoring and they found that there were other things that went wrong during election day, mm -hmm. that could be something else. But also the civil society, we, this year, I think for the first time mm -hmm. in, in the history, we were able to do a long-term observation. Okay. You've seen civil society organizations that have also done um, observation since uh, Congress, mm -hmm. party Congress. Mm -hmm. So all those things we were looking at, what is the level playing ground for all these political parties? Uh, what is the atmosphere like? Mm -hmm. But what is actually the democracy of in, in, in these political parties? Mm -hmm. They speak about democracy, but is that, the, is that really the thing that exists in their different political parties? No. So all those things are, are steps that we have also followed, okay. just to make sure that before we get to the D-Day, yeah. we, we are able to send the atmosphere that awaits us on election day. I so I, I, I think our report would stand even if something comes out of it yeah. the other day. Well, Mr. Danfa, Cyprus certainly <laughs> couldn't have expected an election petition in the court. So that was not in your report. Did you have <laughs> any hint that that might happen? No. Yeah. What uh, election is just an election. So, I mean, um, what what I've said in the past is that uh, you know every candidate has the right yes, to yes. express your grievances in our court of election yes. at the court of law. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, that is it. Sorry, my mic was there. Well, yeah. Uh, well, we are on air. Yeah. Television. Yeah. So what I what I'm saying is um, yeah. it's. Um, every candidate's right mm -hmm. to challenge yeah. the outcome of an election if you feel that you are cheated exactly. in an election. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, nobody can make that, you know, look, you know, something odd or whatever. Yeah. Maybe the candidate have, you know, uh, better evidences that the public do not have. Mm -hmm. So it is only the, the court, yeah. you know, who will decide, you know, either ways, you know, whether to, you know, uphold or whatever, annul the, the elections. But um, um, what is important as far as I am concerned, mm -hmm. on a, at a personal level, yeah. you know, I think the whole petition to me is uh, bigger than either to annul the elections or the results or not. But mm -hmm. to me, I mean, uh, for posterity, it might also set, mm -hmm. you know, some kind of precedent to ensure that mm -hmm. in the coming elections, mm -hmm. there will be a level playing ground. Okay. You know, because if you look at some of the issues raised, mm -hmm. you know, by the political parties in yeah. their petition, yes. you know, would also is a request, if you like, yeah. for a level playing ground that, that we do not have an incumbent who will want to, you know, take yeah. over everything. Okay. But instead, there should be mm -hmm. a level playing ground. So, okay. I mean, you know, the, the, the other advantage we might get yeah. from the ruling whatever mm -hmm might be in the interest of you know future politicians as well so what you are saying is at least whatever the outcome the lessons that we may learn yeah. from this election um, protect um i mean what you said might be that uh, it may help the future elections future elections 
to be you know better organized or perhaps more transparent than uh, that, that, that 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 the ones that have passed. Exactly. Yeah. You agree with that? Yeah, I I quite agree because uh, you looked at the recommendations that were also mm. provided yeah. um, by the EU, the AU, the Elders Commission, mm. and even the local observers. Mm -hmm. These were some of the recommendations that we have also made. Exactly. Um, that there is not enough political playing field for mm -hmm. all the players. Mm -hmm. It is not that level. So at some at some point, it is the incumbent that is having advantage mm -hmm. over any other. So you look at the prayers of the petition, um, issues that are highlighted there, whether it is to say that the election results will be annulled and a fresh election will be called, mm -hmm. that is something else. But whatever the ruling is, mm -hmm. it is going to add a lot to our democratization okay. process. Going to be and like it is going to build... A legal precedent. Yes, it is going to build this country better. Mm -hmm. Because it is going to, any time somebody could reference it anywhere to say that in 2021 mm -hmm. or 2022, right, the so. ruling of this was that. Mm -hmm. So every player that is going into the field will know that this is what I am supposed to do and this is what I cannot do. Mm -hmm. um, having to, allegedly, having to have ministers, state ministers live in their office or public servants live in their offices mm -hmm. to go into the campaign terrain and campaign for the incumbent. Um, if those things are, those are some of the issues that we have in the petition. Yeah. So, but if those ones are found to be true, mm -hmm. then whatever the, the Supreme Court is going to make mm -hmm. would set a precedent that 2026, mm -hmm. we don't have any public servant getting into getting the public involved. terrain, uh, uh, campaign terrain to campaign. But also the inducement part of it, mm -hmm. um, if, if anything, mm -hmm. uh, whatever the outcome of it, it is either if it is to say that, okay, it is fine to go and do inducements so long as you get in votes from them. Yeah. So that would tell every player that 2026, 20, if you want to vote, uh, if you want to win, you must get a lot of suitcase with money <laughs> to be able to win their votes. Well, but if the court is saying that you cannot do inducement cannot, during well, the process. the law says, the law is against inducement. Yeah, it is against But, but when you can prove yes. somebody has to do inducement. So if, if it is found to be true, mm -hmm. So 2026, everybody knows uh, that this is out of it for me. Mm -hmm. It is either I go to these people, sell my programs to them, they buy, or else I am doomed. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think Gambia would win at the end of the day. Whether the petitioners get it their way, they or, or they don't get it their yeah. way, but our democracy, it is going to add a lot to it. Yes. Just to add up, um, you see, I think here also with regards to political finance. You know, this has been issue that personally I've been talking about, mm -hmm. that um, political parties should be able to disclose mm -hmm. their source of finding. Yes. But interestingly, even the, the rejected um, election bill has, you know, talked about that, mm -hmm. but almost all parties in unison, mm -hmm. you know, rejected, rejected it. disclosing yeah. their source of funding. Yeah. So you see, unless we have that clause in yeah. our electoral law yeah. that all political parties disclose mm -hmm. their source of finding. It becomes difficult yeah. and even to, the, to, to track and, and even, know. And even the bit about uh, alcalo attestations. Yeah. I mean, when it was raised there, uh, surprisingly, all the political parties, you know, agreed that well. If you yeah. take that out, a lot of people does, didn't have the. A national I or I yes. national ID card, so a lot of people will be disfranchised. So is it, so, it, so, so that's, that's if, those, if those kind of laws are not put in place, you yeah. know, the one with the biggest with cost, biggest suitcase, so. you know, <laughs> eventually, yeah, we'll, 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 yeah, but because politics is about money, yeah, money you is know, so that is why it is important that you know there is some kind of control, control, you know, in terms of even transfer and accountability for political parties. Mm -hmm. They should be accountable. Yep. We should know who they are, you know, financiers, for example. Exactly. You know, that's, that's, this that's in the long been. run is going to help us. There have been a lot know, of calls for are, this kind of thing. Yeah, if there are any, mm -hmm. you know, collusion, yeah. you know, in the future, so mm -hmm. that people can flag that. That's but that's unless that is done, mm -hmm. we will continue, yeah. you know, to speculate. Yeah, but then I, I just want to take it a different way. <clears throat> that it is good to declare a source of funding for political parties. Mm. But because that is going to add a lot to uh, the accountability and the uh, good governance aspect of it. Mm -hmm. But again, when we say that this has to be in the laws, we must also make sure that we create the institutions to protect these political parties. Mm. Let's say, for instance, during JAMES time, mm -hmm. UDP dare not to declare th their source of funding. Because if it is a person who lives in this country and has a business in this country, mm. obviously it's going to be shut down. Ah, so if okay. the law is basically saying that political parties will have to 
declare their source of funding. Mm. The law must also ensure that they are protected from any. Well, well of course, uh, all that has to be in the <laughs> yes. in the framework so, of a freedom and democratic uh, culture, uh, such it, as we have now. Uh, yeah, it it, it 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 could be, but then the emphasis has been on declaring their source of funding. funding. But the fear yeah. has always been yeah. that if I declare my source of funding, ah. what happens if that it, person... There may be reprisals against yes. that person. So if it happens, obviously you're bringing the political party to its knee. Mm. So we would also have to ensure that these political parties are also protected, yeah. especially from the state. Well, why, why it is needed, according to the, the proponents of this yeah. uh, election financing, uh, re, re, um, I mean, uh, to, to disclose it, is that... Uh, what they wanted was for the political parties to be transparent and not they not been bought or been in use or actually been funded by people who have ulterior motives. motives. I mean, at least that will assure the citizens that these are credible people organizations who are going to protect the interests of the country and not the person who is financing them. Yeah, I, I, think, you, that is, that is, I think that is what, that's why it's very, very, very popular now among people. Yeah who are no. looking out for transparency in no. elections for the parties to declare their source of funding. Yeah, because yeah. otherwise, uh, I mean, there will be, I mean, it's just going to be an empty check. Anybody can spend anyhow you are using anything. Yeah, I think, I think it has to be looked at, just like you said, in a, you know, a broader framework. Mm -hmm. You know, that's your concern that you raise how to be factored in. And, and in fact, government given you know, finance set aside for political parties. Political parties, like other, 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 other countries agree, do. Yeah. Yeah. So, but if you look at the Gambia, you know, the government is not giving any money mm -hmm. to the to the opposition parties, for example. Absolutely. I mean, it, it has to be look, looked at, it doesn't you know, give like it a broader It doesn't give to ruling party anyway. <laughs> it doesn't, I know. <laughs> you know. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah, but it gives an advantage to the ruling party. Um, kudos to Baro. Mm. I think uh, for the first time we have seen him use his personal vehicles mm -hmm. to go on and campaign and not state vehicles. Okay. We have seen the NPP1, the NPP2. Yeah. Their source of funding is not a question for me. And because the crit I critics would say, <laughs> where and how were they? Yeah, their source, <laughs> of, uh, their source is not a so question that's why for me. The, that's why answer. the funding of political parties come to play. Yeah, but then it, it is always given <laughs> an advantage to the incumbent. For, for Jame, for instance, mm -hmm. you go to Denton Bridge, you find a, a director, mm -hmm. a state director waiting for a public vehicle, a mm -hmm. commercial vehicle, mm -hmm. to join and go to his office yeah. because his car has been seized, seized. from him at the dentin break yeah, because, because it is supposed to go on campaign. Yeah. So if if all those things are at the disposal of the state or the incumbent, mm -hmm. and you put the orders at the disadvantage end, mm -hmm. so that is why I would always say that we must ensure that either the state is providing them mm -hmm. fundings to support their their activities, mm -hmm. or if they are going to declare their source of funding, mm -hmm. they are also protected from the state, or their people are protected from the state for being punished by saying that you do this for this person. So obviously we deny you, even for those that you've deserved. Mm -hmm. So all those things will also have to be factored. If not, the, the oppositions will continue to reject the proposal to have their source of funding being declared. But also the attestation. Mm -hmm. I, I see the attestation to be an advantage for every player in this. Every player? Every player. I, uh, that is why the, the proposal How? has been rejected. I cannot imagine during during the registration process mm -hmm. that somebody who said he is a Gambian or she is a Gambian, mm -hmm. um, you come to the registration center, you are 35 or even 40. Mm -hmm. You live in this country from day one until when you're 35, you're 40. Mm -hmm. You're telling people that you don't have any document to show that you're a Gambian. Mm -hmm. You go to the Alcalo and the Alcalo provides for you. Mm -hmm. But also for those that do not even meet the requirement, the age requirement, that the easiest way that they could get registered is to go and get an attestation. So you see more people coming with attestations that you can obviously tell that they must have a document that is either not a gambling document or they are below the age requirement to get registered. So, okay. and I see most of the political parties or even all of them doing that mobilization to get people registered who they thought were going to vote for them. Yeah, because when it was tabled, the election bill, when it was being discussed uh, between the stakeholders and the IEC, um, the issue was raised that attestations could be abused. But like I said, interestingly, all the political parties agreed that it must stay because uh, otherwise a lot of people 
will be disenfranchised because they don't have the other national identity documents like passport and ID card. But the issue now here is, it remains definitely as a fact that it can be abused. Yes. And in fact, some, some of the opposition have already started making those allegations that this, it was abused. Because, you know, the Alcalolu and the Sefolu naturally um, are under the authority of the Minister of Local Government, who, who is uh, under the authority of uh, uh, one of the candidates to the president, etc. So they believe that this Alcalolu and Sefolu can be used to abuse the system in favor of a political party. But then, of course, you know, I think in future elections, I can tell you, I can tell you for free, the stakeholders will not accept this um, attestation anymore. There has to be a way to get everybody issued with a birth certificate or a passport or ID card. This attestation, I can tell you, will, will, not, will, not, will not last the future elections because, because of what I've, the reasons I've told you. Yeah, and it agrees to the earlier statement that all of us have made here. Mm -hmm that whatever the outcome of the Supreme Court ruling, mm -hmm. it is going to add a lot to our democracy. Exactly. So since this is also part of their prayers mm -hmm. to say that um, attestations have been issued to minors and also foreigners. Mm -hmm. So let's say, for instance, they, they, something is passed mm -hmm. to say that attestations cannot be issued mm -hmm. again for presidential elections. Yeah, because they cannot guarantee the integrity of yes. the process. That is, whether they'll call or say for So, the, whatever. The, it's whether, only more ideal if, yeah. if at all is honesty and integrity is okay. It can serve everybody's purpose. But then if, if of course, they'll call and say for allegedly are favoring one side of it, then it becomes an issue. That's why I'm saying that uh, it may definitely not be among the... <laughs> requirements it may not in the be. next, in the and, next um, election of course even for the issue of birth certificate until it is standardized yes um, that, that can also in the be long run i yeah. foresee it to be out of the equation, of the equation. you yeah. have a birth certificate and you want to be registered mm. you'll be rejected because Finally, it is also open to very abuse. quickly um you the whole world of course marked international human rights day and i know your organization also have a program of human rights advocacy very quickly, because we are running out of time. Um, how do you compare this human rights situation in the Gambia? Uh, of course, our benchmark is 2016 and now, mm. because we know before 2016, it, it was almost suddenly impossible, in fact, to say that any human rights actually existed. <laughs> I, I may not be exaggerated, but then that's how it is. So how improved has the situation been? Uh, I think... Uh building of a five-star hotel is it's it's good for it. <laughs> <laughs> so jamie used to have a five-star hotel here so oh, that wow, there you go. <laughs> so but then uh, on a more serious note i think the human rights um, state of this country has improved significantly mm -hmm. um from 2017 to date mm -hmm. and uh, also to just to reference certain things that will also confirm this statement mm -hmm. is the establishment of the Human Rights Commission, okay. a state institution that is mandated to do the promotion and protection of human rights in this country. Mm -hmm. But also you looked at some bills that have also been passed, mm -hmm. uh, some acts that have also been made at the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. That also tells you how much this country is also improving mm -hmm. in terms of state of uh, human rights in this country. Mm -hmm. The Access to Information Bill, for instance, mm -hmm. um, act. That alone is also, even though there, are, there exist some other uh, um, criminal laws, mm -hmm. the, the sedition, the defamation, and other stuff. But also, even for the public order, mm -hmm. uh, wherein you'll have to uh, apply for permits, even mm -hmm. though they exist. But we can see generally an improvement mm -hmm. that when you apply for a permit, in most instances, it is provided for you. Wherein, even if it is not provided to you, mm -hmm. at the day that you want to hold the event, mm -hmm. the IG would invite, um, invite you and provide you an alternative date mm -hmm. to say that this is the situation, the security situation of the country exactly. as it is. So that is quite an improvement. But also the disability bill, this is also another to confirm okay. that our human rights status in this country is also improving. Mm -hmm. Because human rights basically looks at everybody to say that every individual, regardless of your age, regardless of your race, ethnicity, or wherever you're coming from, mm -hmm. you have a right. right. 
So the, the people with, who are physically challenged in our society mm -hmm. have a right, but also these rights have not been protected mostly by the state. Okay. But again, generally, even uh, we say that there are improvements, mm -hmm. but also, however we will say, mm -hmm. there is also a room for improvement. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for instance, our, our constitution mm -hmm. has made primary education compulsory. Okay. For for every Gambian child, but case. but is this the case? Mm. My 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 brother and sister in the village mm. does not have this opportunity that I am available to. Mm. So if you say that the the it is compulsory for every Gambian there child, when there is no accessibility, there is no affordability mm. for every individual. Meaning you only have it, but then you are not doing the fulfillment. Mm. So rights are for protection, promotion, and also fulfillment. So when you have them, when you promote them, you have them uh, in your laws, you now protect them. Mm. But again, the state go the extra mile to also well, make sure. When so you said primary education is compulsory, and now you want to, you wonder the reasons it's not happening. Where did responsibility lie? In the parent or in the authorities? Because I think it should be the authorities. Like in advanced countries, once. Your, the birth of your child or children are registered. I mean, when they reach school going age, you receive communication from the authorities. To s maybe local authorities to say, yes. your child now must go to school. We don't have that here. Well, who, are we, who, who would you blame? Parent or the enforcing authorities? The enforcing or authorities. Or you say there's a lack of school in the first place? There is lack of infrastructure, first place. Okay. It is not accessible to every individual. When anytime I leave Combo, going to the provinces. Mm. I get shocked. But, uh, but I see Jamme, people... But Jamme and now Baro are just beating their chest that they've built a lot of schools and yeah. classrooms. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that is true. They have built a lot of stru ah. structures. Mm. But there still exists a lot of gap. Mm. And since it is a constitutional right mm. to say primary education should be compulsory for every individual. Mm. So the institution that is even mandated to do this, let's say the basic and secondary education, mm -hmm. they are not able to meet this requirement. Because for one, the resources are not available. Absolutely. For two, the infrastructure is not available. Yeah. So when you walk from Combo down to the provinces, yeah. you see a girl who is just 11, 12 or so, mm. walking from one village to the other I saw kilometers. Cycling. So obviously, yeah. So for a family where who feels that my child is not protected in such a situation, mm -hmm. you will live with no choice mm -hmm. than to keep your child home. Wow. So if that happens, it is the failure of the state to ensure that education is provided to the doorstep of every individual and not the parent because they are left with no other option. Suppress, Mr. Dampa, I think, uh, I mean, can you foresee having human rights uh, matters also be researched by Suppress? Um, well, um, in fact, during the, the election period, um, yeah. the, um, the High Commissioner for Human Rights based in the U.S., we are yeah. also in the country. Yeah. And specifically, I met, I met the team, mm. you know, um, who are in the country, even though they told me they are not on an election observation, but yeah. they are looking at human rights issues as it relates mm. to the election. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had a... Um, a very wonderful discussion with them, mm -hmm. you know, with regards to, you know, potential flash points in the country during elections and so on, mm -hmm. you know, and that that was the concern of even the United Nations towards, towards this election on human rights issues, mm -hmm. you know. So you know they've all, they've dispatched a team in the country, you know, to look at that, and mm -hmm. they have met with some few, you know, you know, local groups in the country to look at those issues. I mean, at at, at Cyprus, you know. Looking at our expertise, you know, university lecturers in different areas, different fields, mm. you know, it's across the board. In fact, we did a study on transitional justice, yeah. you know, with UNDP. Mm. You understand, and and, and and there are also a lot of hosts of studies that Cyprus has done, and certainly, you know, these and other areas are things that you know we will always mm. venture into it. Lavin Damfa, CEO of uh, the Center for Policy Research and Strategic Studies, Cyprus. Uh, thank you very much for sharing your insights with the branch. And Sanaba Jaula is the senior program officer for Be Kanyang, a non profit, profit NGO uh, who operates in uh, human rights and development advocacy. Thank you very much, gentlemen.
for being on the brunch. The brunch continues after this break with an update on the Gambia's preparations to take part in the Africa Cup of Nations in Cameroon starting January the 9th. We'll be back with that after this break. Planning to have an uninterrupted electricity and water supply from solar energy in the Gambia and beyond? Worry no more, because Solar Enterprise will provide you with the solutions at reasonable cost. We have experienced personals who can install and advise you about your electricity and water supply with a warranty period. We have good quality solar products from North America and Europe. We provide services and sell products to individuals, organizations, institutions, private offices, communities, and government. These products are solar panels, batteries, charge controllers, inverters, water pump, water heaters, freezers, submissable pumps, and general solar accessories. Visit our stores at 48 Kairaba Avenue and Brusubi Highway, or you can call us on 7657-479-980. 8483-340-9400 or 635-9906. of owning your dream homes. EJ Investment is here for you. Secure our quality bungalows with two, three, or four bedrooms or our story building three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans at our Sanyang Sea View Estate where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts, and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, school, children daycare, and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, sonar panel, and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service, such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 3259-220. Or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic Microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic Microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832-151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you.
planning to have an on our focus to sports because significantly the Gambia is going to take part in the Africa Cup of Nations for the very first time now we just about three weeks or so before kickoff we will turn to the National Coordinating Committee responsible for coordinating uh, all the arrangements and logistics to ensure our participation. They were here last week and they will be here actually until everything is put in place for that historic event. Now, I'm here in the studio with uh, Ida Barr from the National Sports Council, a member of uh, the uh, NCC. Sadibu Kamaso is uh, executive member of the GFF and also a member of the NCC. And so is Musa Sise, who is the spokesman for the NCC and president of the Sports Journalists uh, Association of the Gambia. So, lady and gentlemen, how far have we gone in this very important fundraising campaign? Perhaps let's go straight to Saribu Kamaso, the, fi the finance man in, in the <laughs> studio. Thank you, Mr. Cham. Thanks for having us. Uh, I think you should have added yourself as a member of <laughs> NCC because <laughs> I keep myself you're an extended <laughs> member. Uh, yes, by as extension, a media committee. Uh, as okay. member of the media committee, so by thank extension, you, you know. You. We're happy to be here again, and thanks for having us. Okay. We appreciate um, the um, mm -hmm. invitation, giving us the opportunity to come and explain to the government people what we've done so far mm -hmm. and how far we've gone. Um, so far as we speak, we are just around the 10 million mark. Wow. And thanks to Afrocell, who have you know contributed a substantial amount of uh, from this amount. Um, they came with the 8 million. Um, so we've done two telethons. Unfortunately, both Teletons haven't even reached 10,000. The first one was 7,700. <laughs> the second one was 7,000. Uh, how um, widespread was it? Uh, which medium did you use? One television or synchronized? It was a single yes. television. So far, we've oh, done GRTS, yes, but there's a simo Musa helped me with simulcast, the... Simulcast, you know. Simo we're doing a simulcasting um, yeah. um, this week. Mm -hmm. Next Thursday, GRTS and all the media platforms are going to be there. So mm -hmm. we're going to use two hours to do that. Mm -hmm. But then even that, I mean, you have a very um, wide viewership of, uh, for GRT. So I, I'm assuming it's just the fact that some people wouldn't just want to um, do their donations. Maybe they would rather go to the bank and do it because there are some people who call and talk about some other thing else. Mm -hmm. But um, so far, so good. We've reached 10 million mark. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping with the festive period coming, there are more people coming from the diaspora. Mm -hmm. The elections has, have, have, past have now. gone past now. We will be able to um, raise a substantial amount before the Afghan proper. But about 10 million has been raised so far. And we still have 107 mm. million. 17 million. About 110 million to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly, fine. certainly. I mean, the 110 million, I, I'm still doing the math. I said Afrocell has 1.4 million subscribers. 1 million subscribers, $5 it's, it's a day, very much 22 it. days, doable. 22 days, $5 a day, that's um, 110 million. Because every day, everybody buys credit to use on their megabyte. Mm -hmm. Whether they're going Everything. online, mm -hmm. they're going, you know, to read oh, news oh, about, mm -hmm. you know, foreign news or local news. They buy megabytes. So from this, every day, I just know. throw five dollars into the Afrocell, mm -hmm. you know, they, through the Afrocell platform on the two triple eight. That is the next twenty two days. That will raise us one hundred and ten million. Absolutely. That is separate from what other corporate bodies are doing. Musa will expound on that mm -hmm. because we have some things that we are working on now, okay. and hopefully everything materializes. This gala dinner would come to fruition, and we would be able to. But as I said, one point four million subscribers. Take one million subscribers, twenty two days. 5 million a day, that is 110 million. Otherwise, every Gambian can just put 100 dollars. Not 100 dollars every day, just 100 dollars. Forget about the 2.4, even 2 million, that's 200 million. Mm -hmm. Instead of us cutting the numbers, we would be able to take more numbers to Cameroon because we do not want our players scoring goals and coming to celebrate in front of a pocket full of fans. Crowd, oh. even you know, crowd. exactly. So we want to take a, a good number. Which is so simple and doable, yet we are, we are, we are really... <laughs> Um, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, as you really, really say, it's so doable, and it re still remains doable. Um, the appeal would relent, we would not relent, we mm -hmm. would keep going. It's so simple. I mean, the math is so simple. Mm -hmm. Only if, which we don't wish to, because, I mean, if only the official subscribers can even fund mm -hmm. this yeah, whole thing. Them alone can. Them alone. Yeah. Or we alone, because we all belong to the, family. To the family. Um, But 
it is sad though to say that people are not coming forward mm. and we've been drumming i um, mean trying to really i mean let the public um, know what's happening um, um but we don't want to go back to what the genuine destruction that we were dealing with mm. earlier on that's gone past right now yeah. we have enough days ahead of us yeah. which we can use to really get back it's not time lost yeah, i don't want to call that yes, it's yes. not time lost but this is still doable i mean is the 1.6 million subscribers let the let's excuse the six the six hundred thousand subscribers but just the one million do a dollar c i mean i mean five dollars c for the next 20 days we are fine do a hundred dollars a day once we are good we are good so that's how easy it is so but we don't want people to keep telling us this is what you should have done we think we have done yes publicity would never be enough Absolutely. would never be enough but as we speak right now all that we ask of the Gambian public is please, 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 let's all come forward. Let's do our bit in making so that a respectable performance, we believe, is a sort from our boys in Cameroon. And perhaps we should clarify. Some people might like, to say, okay, what are they going to do? What are, what are they going to do with this money? Oh, good. Uh, I think it will be important <laughs> to come out and explain. Because somebody might say, okay, yeah, this money is let me know problem. first what are they going to do with yeah. it. Okay, so um, first of all, football incurs a lot of expenditure these players normally all these whiles they've been playing they normally just go for a game mm. an away game and then come back and you know you just have an eight day period for their camping these players are going for a tournament you and, need to pay them and camping for example that single outing would cost mm. you about 15 million dollars mm, yeah, that is just the allowance just you're yes. not talking about the aircraft that outing alone 15 million for example dollars. okay you have a pre-afcon camp the players are going for a pre-afcon camp in qatar Okay, they are all going to converge from the 27th and go on a pre-Afcon camp until the 7th, Sixth. 5th or 6th, around there about. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Aira. Mm -hmm. So the pre-Afcon camp, you need to pay them camping allowances for all those days, mm -hmm. right? And when the tournament starts, you need to pay them camping allowance continually. Different. You need to pay them March bonuses. bonuses. There's win bonus, there's draw bonus. Mm -hmm. Other countries are paying like ten thousand dollars for a win bonus. Mm -hmm. Even appearance fee, just to come and appear, they're paying thirty two. I read the other day Morocco are paying appearance fee thirty two thousand dollars just to come and appear. Yeah, yeah. It's different from that. We are not paying that. We're just paying allowances per day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you have feeding and accommodation. accommodation. Mm -hmm. CAF is taking care of certain aspects of this. Yeah. But most of these things you pre-finance and certain parts come in. Come in. No. And then, the pre-Afcon camp, the aircraft that is going to take them, mm -hmm. the air tickets, yeah. their feeding and accommodation, oh, there yeah. is another aspect that we need to cater for. Mm -hmm. We intend to take funds from here to go and celebrate with the players in Cameroon. Yes. Those people are going to be catered for the feeding their accommodation, their air tickets, mm -hmm. because we intend to charter a flight. That aside, mm -hmm. you intend to ensure that there are qualification bonuses, not the win bonuses. For instance, you could say, we're going to entice you with this amount if you go if past you the, the quarter final. Quarter, we'll pass the round of 16. Exactly. Other countries, their budgets, like Musa said the other day, of 500 course, million. Five million <laughs> we million. haven't reached that. So, mm -hmm. and mind you, this 117 million, may not even cater for what we can we have to give them if they have to reach the finals yeah, mm -hmm. so imagine the boys double, become double, the elements double, of double. surprise and reach the finals we'll be here scavenging for money mm -hmm. to entice them even further because if they are sitting down and watching their counterparts being offered maybe fifty thousand dollars each if they win the next game, next game. Uh, you know so all these funds goes in there absolutely and the people who are going to travel from here everybody who travels on behalf of the ncc from here gets taken care of from these funds. Mm -hmm. So it includes everything and the pre-Afcon camp. Yeah, the pre-Afcon camp, Saadibu, and of course the, 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 the friendly matches that have been played so far. All of this is included in the $117 million budget. And I th believe that was why Afrisal had to come to our aid when we were supposed to play the other, uh, the most recent friendly uh, international. So it's an in, uh, investment and it's expensive and like he said this 117 million may not be enough at the end of the day that is when it because remember qualification bonuses are not catered in this 117 uh, million dollars and if they turn out to be the element of surprise there uh, in Cameroon I repeat his right. words again we will be here scavenging for money because the more they qualify the better they perform you increase their match bonuses 
and they are winning bonuses or you have to put something on the table to say if you win this match against this team we have this amount of money waiting for you all these things entice the team it motivates them even more to perform even better and we're gonna do all these things with empty pocket mm -hmm. all right the, somebody will say okay let's do as the other countries you are mentioning have done mm -hmm. what have they done that you have not done um, very good. Because I, I, I think it's the same things that they have done. Yeah, corporate, the, corporate sponsorship, mm -hmm. citizenship, uh, participation, mm -hmm. government uh, intervention. I, I, I think um, that's, a very, that's, that's a very good one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's, I mean, what others have done that we've not done. Mm -hmm. You remember 1986 when Senegal made their debut appearance in the in, in, in this the, very in this tournament the whole world had them. the whole world had them mm -hmm. why did the whole whole world hear them mm -hmm. it's simply because everybody every single why i was talking to oh, some sure. people even i mean the the old women selling groundnuts on the streets mm -hmm. all had to chip in you know what they have we don't have petrol Thank you. Let's let's get there. I'm coming to that. As they we would say, Antanka Senegal is yeah, used Antanka Senegal. As, as, as a Gambian. Patriotism is our problem. As a Gambian, I mean, I Black. hope we are being listened to. I hope we're being heard. I hope we're being watched and being saying these things. I mean, you cannot be more patriotic than you know in the in the in, the, in, in the all of language. I will, I will, we I will, I will. must have to like ourselves. And for far too long, I mean, I'm sorry. This is a little bit deviating. It's not my most of the times what we me you and others would spending their time talking about is how bad or how negative well, or why wouldn't i do this for gambia mm. and this is the patriotism that you're talking about loving mother gambia wanting to do everything for gambia no matter what in any language that i believe we can use this thing to sell what we are doing right now the campaign i think it will work that's what the other people did it that we cannot do. Sure. Let me give you something very pathetic and very sad. Yeah. For the last couple of months since we started this campaign, mm. the AfriCell account, that is the AfriMoney account, yes. the AfriMoney account, which is the 288288, right. every day, the amount of transactions that takes place for normal, for customers, AfriCell, AfriMoney customers, is in the millions. Millions? Yeah, for example. Okay. But as we speak, as of last week, I can confirm and through this medium to tell not a single deposit has been made there by a Gambian in support of this campaign. How mm -hmm. sad. How sad. Well, I mean, to, to, how do to, we walk it? How do we things? look at ourselves? Yes. Because at least <laughs> sports, football, <laughs> is one thing that, uh, I mean, everybody. <laughs> really have no problem with I can see no difference it's a unifier because it, it, it promotes to, to, it's a unifier in fact it's a unifier to add on to his response uh, respond to your question mm -hmm. what have other countries done that we are not doing right now yeah. that is uh, like in the case of I'll always take example of Senegal mm -hmm. they are our closest neighbor mm -hmm. we should not go far mm -hmm. like corporate sponsors yes Senegal once they qualify for any tournament and in all their sports, not just football, you see corporate institutions will come out in their numbers voluntarily. Kiwi, you don't even Kiwi. have to give them. Thank Kiwi. you. Kiwi. You don't Kiwi. even have to submit a proposal to them. No, you don't have to reach out. They queue. Instead, they queue to join. To, to be the privileged sponsor. Thank you. They fight, they struggle to be the main partner of the, let's say, national football team or the national basketball team of Senegal. That is one thing other countries are doing that Gambia is not doing right now and is unfortunate. And this is one of the reasons why I, in almost every platform, we have to mention and comment uh, 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 Africell and Vista Bank. Vista Bank in particular. Out of nowhere, they just called Sadio and said, we have this thing to offer. Since we are rebranding, re Vista Bank is a former FI bank. Yeah. Since we are rebranding, and we haven't settled yet, but we were just were out of nothing. They're not expecting anything. They're not expecting to be given any form of publicity or any other thing. Yeah. Just as an institution operating in the country, they said we have 250,000 Delasi for the NCC. This is our no, uh, generous participation towards Gambia's maiden participation in Cameroon. How many other Vista banks do we have in this country? I want, to, I want to join Ida. I want to help Ida there. Yeah. I mean, thank you, Ida, for bringing that. Mm. Um, she mentioned Africell, yeah. mm -hmm. Vista Bank, and the question was, what have the others done that we haven't? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is what Africell, Vista, 
Malik Mendy mm. have done. Yeah. Because the others, yes, yeah. with due respect to them, we went to them. Mm. But these three, mm. Afrisel, we qualified mm. when the NCC was being yeah, inaugurated. They, they came with a proposal and said, guys, we have this much for you. We can offer you 8 million cash. We have our billboards. We have our SMS platform. We can throw you a dinner and fund it. They did that. Malik Mendy, I was... I was so, you know, oh, he was, he, yeah. I think surprise is an understatement. Yeah. I mean, when they, when, when the National Sports Council told me, yeah. Malik Mendy just walked in and gave $10,000. Awesome. awesome. You know, nobody went to him. Mm. Awesome. The, the, some of these, us like this. Vista yeah. Bank called me. And some of these institutions, you go there, they're like, but we haven't had. Mm. You, or you, have you written? Mm. Mm. We've written, but even if we haven't written, yeah. you know, I mean, Musa, myself, either, we are all volunteering. NCC does not pay us anything. Mm. We drive our own cars put our own fuel and go around all these institutions. People will tell you, have you written? We, like you said, what have the others done? These people will queue in other places. Mm. They have a fuel partner. Mm. They have a hotel partner. partner. They have airline, a GSM partner. partner. They have an airline partner. partner. We have partner. all of these things here. Mm -hmm. But you go, they, you know, it's, it's like people are a bit coy on how do we come in and they're looking at the, what most of these institutions, are, I'm afraid, I'm sorry that, that I'm saying this, but most of them are looking for returns now. now. And this is a huge investment because right. I've been saying this, I've been drumming this. If we go there and our players perform well, mm -hmm. everybody gets to know about, about us. us. They get bigger contracts, Absolutely. they go to bigger leagues. If All these monies they make, the remittances. And, and, and with or without Brian good Elodie performance, sir, just right, the appearance. Right, the remittances come here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have more scouts coming here. Now, Where are they going to take these monies? Yeah. They bring the monies here. Back Which here. banks are they going to bank these monies? Which hotels are they going to? Absolutely. So Which now you come to your point, like we talk about corporates. Uh, did you take the approach? Okay, you might have written to individual institutions, uh, but like, like, like you said, all of them belong to umbrella organizations. For example, if you get the bankers' association, uh, mm -hmm. engage them. Did you do that and say, well, you know what? Now it is time for you to use your influence to get each each bank donate this amount, uh, right? Then you go to the hotel association and said, okay, you know, we know we have COVID and other things. But now we want you to use your influence now and your structures to get every hotel to donate some. You do the same for the insurance companies, the transport union, they're well organized already. Perhaps you get every taxi driver and someone else to do these things. Maybe those things can help also, rather than going to the individuals who might be thinking of their individual, um, you know, returns or sort of trouble. But if you use the umbrella and compel them this time because you know some of these things you, you have to exert some sort of pressure and say look you know this is a national cause yeah, so they before Musa comes in there Mr. Cham let yes. me just uh, before Musa comes in mm. for the corporate institutions I don't want to call it donate okay all oh, right let's corporate not, responsibility. Not partnership mm -hmm. ah, okay even though they have a CSR, yeah. a corporate social responsibility, mm -hmm. I call it partnership because mm -hmm. the letters that have been written to all these institutions, the banks, even the bank association, so they were written to. Exactly. It's We've written to most of these institutions. Mm -hmm. okay. You've written to them, oh, has, has the letter been sent? Yes, the letter was here. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need to sit and look at it. We you know our, it's end of year, our, our budgets, you know, but Gambia qualified way back in March. March. Way back in March. And if that you was everywhere. Budget, it was everywhere. Here. We were all here. Gambia qualified way back in March. So even if we came now, everybody knows Gambia qualified way back in March. Fine. Just so that Musa can come in there. We are partnering with you. We want to advertise for you. We want to have your logo on whatever we're doing. When we went to Dubai and the training camp recently, the training jerseys that we, they were wearing was all Afrisel. Mm -hmm. People in Dubai were looking at it. Where is Afrisel? Af yeah, you know, yeah, it's, not, it's publicity for them. They're not looking they're at it from that right, angle. Yeah. So imagine we had, you know, the name of a bank. And somebody wants to do an inflow here or they want to set up a business here oh we saw this bank when the national team came to gambia we want to go to that bank it sells you it gives you that platform so we are not just asking them for donation we are asking them to partner with us so we can take them imagine how much rwanda paid to be on arsenal's oh, sleeve money. on the sleeve a lot. A lot. and a small and that's a country is. yes the whole country a lot well Everybody the opposition bad. parties were saying that's a lot of money but Kagame was selling but, them it worth it. Countries and people have seen it. sometimes even when Arsenal lose, Paul Kagame will tweet. Ah, and yeah. Say, and say. <laughs> so, Musa. Why not? Yeah, but, but the, the good mean, thing. We, we, you know, all these things. Okay, okay. Let, let's, let's elaborate on like, um, you know, when, <laughs> when, when peaceful negotiations <laughs> fail. <laughs> I don't want to get to those serious drastic <laughs> measures. No, 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 now, no. Now, get somebody that they most listen to. No. Get the finance minister here and say, look, you know what? <laughs> or, or the GRA director, director, what would they call it? 
Commissioner Jerry Zillow. 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 Yeah, this, they, they can't do without him. Yeah. Get them on board Zillow. You know what? Yeah. This one, we, let us all focus on and do this first. <laughs> we, 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 we will not get to that. I, I definitely no. hope. I mean, <laughs> Asadibu, Asadibu mentioned charm. What, what is happening in here is that the transport union, we can ask for donations. Mm. The, 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 the associations, we can ask for, yeah. for donations, for, donations. for support. Yes. Yeah. Every other single institution, parastatal business, we ask for a partnership. If you are in part, if you are in business, being a corporate individual like we are, you want to believe that the opportunity to identify yourselves with the national team at this particular moment in time is too good to be true. Mm -hmm. You can never get this better. You are never going to get any opportunity like this. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, there are lots of coincidences. It's the end of the year. Budget's been ex. I mean, I mean, uh, how to call it? Exhausted. You know, I mean, financial statements. You know, had to be looking good at the end of the year and all those things. But you have a way of going about in preparing yourself for the following year because that's what this thing is all about. Mm. It is about the investment for the near, near year, year ahead of you. Mm. And we can all do that. That is what my institution did. That's why orders, we are calling on orders to do. Because the moment the national team qualified is when we started engaging the federation, not even the NCC. We had a series of meetings with the, NC, with, with the federation. Absolutely. This is what we want to do. This is how we can help. This is how we want to be with you. And that's what translated into the NCC's agreement with AfriSelf, for example. We don't have to wait for anybody, not because I was there or whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but yeah. we said, you know what, this is what we should do. Mm -hmm. And they can still do it. Absolutely. And it's still possible. Yeah, yeah. Now, the telethons we are talking yes. about, for example. Is tossed, yeah, we, we will do But this is why we believe, sorry, we we'll mentioned that even some people want to donate, but they want to do it dis discreetly, Discreet. which is very fine. Mm -hmm. Even for it is that. We, 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 you we, wonder why anybody will do it. Yeah, like but why not? Some people don't want to <laughs> ah, see, they, they don't want anything, to be, they, don't they want have benevolence to be known and yeah. so on and so forth, but that's fine. We, are, we, we, we want to respect those kind of people mm -hmm. very much because they care in a different way. Yeah. And that also should be acknowledged. I respect it. But for institutions, mm -hmm. You need this thing. I want to call on every single institution there is in the country, businesses, mm. parastatals. I want to shout, scream your name, and I want to take your name to town. Absolutely. I want to take your business to town. I want you to come with me. Your business. Come with me. Yeah. You're, 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 the gum the social securities, the GPS. Uh, the the GRS. GRS. We've had we've had the likes of they? National Youth Service Scheme giving NYSS. fifty thousand. Yes, 50, yes. they gave fifty thousand the other day. Mm -hmm. okay. So security I mean, report. Which is company, security report. And those are non profitable Secure mm, report. No. You know about secure report. They are the airport. Okay. Mm. And yes. they, they they pledge five hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand mm. dollars. Um, car powership also. Mm. They haven't given us the figure, but they've also um, made some sort of commitment. Okay. Hopefully, we can get those this week. I'm hoping this week we can reach the twenty million. All million. right, and then I hope the rest take it uh, up from there. Car power have pledged security yeah. port. You name it. So I hope. By next week, when we come here on Saturday, we will yes, be like yes. Lamin Cham, Social like Security, have companies. Uh, Gambia Ports Authority, Gambia Bura, Revenue Bura Authority, this, you name it, all you, of you them, know, all of them. Uh, GIA, Gambia International GCCAA, Airlines. All of them. That's that. I wanted to. That, that's GIA, I, I, I GCAA, want to drum up. Yeah. I want to drum up what uh, Mr. Cham is saying. Come to think of it, maybe not the Director General of GRA, maybe His Excellency. Yes, can just come out and call names and say, okay, I, think the I need 10 million from yeah. each of you or 5 million each. Yes. Mm. Maybe His Excellency can Absolutely help us do he that. Can do that. And, and that would be not out of order. Yeah, I, I a, mean, this is, a that's, a, that's a good one. That's yeah, a good one. The order. most important thing you yeah. mentioned here is that it's not out of it's order. Out of order. <laughs> <laughs> if it is out of order, what would happen? Yeah. Well, <laughs> hopefully it's not. not it's not out of order. So yeah. this is where it's I think the call can come in that, hey, Your Excellency, this is not out of order, you know? This is just. Uh, consider you know. leading we are not we're not, we're not dismissing or he, anything i mean out. if the president can open up yeah. he, he he was able to start yeah. he gave one million dollars and urged yeah. all these institutions all the mm. parastatals yes. to he come said forward, he, come he, forward. He, said that. he did say that okay. so maybe he just needs to send a gentle yeah, perhaps, reminder perhaps we need to get back to him <laughs> and then and said now even your message speak, alone speak to the people even your message alone can do the trick mm. for us because we hope so yeah uh, and so. i think the sooner that comes better because it will help in speeding up the press getting people organizations getting committed because they say well the president uh, has led this uh, campaign is leading it so 
inspiring everybody. In this, in this so good, it needs in this, to come in this on board. Good, in this good, I mean, feel good, I mean, era in which environment, we are in, you know, yes, environment, yes, so sure. we believe it's going to. So that also depends on, I mean, even, I, I, I believe, Lamin Cham, even if, if the president didn't speak up, all heads of these institutions are very progressive young men and women mm. who I believe had the Gambia at heart, yes. who I believe know a thing or two about what football is and what it entails Absolutely. and the amount of money involved. Mm. And that's for every sports though. But historically, historically, that's the most important thing. Yeah. Historically, I think that should just be anything that outweighs any obstacle that they might be considering in coming forward to support this thing. For me, that's what it, that, that's what it is. And I believe that they should also think, being an optimist, you know what? I think this is a very you good. You don't think, as we said, we need a far more involvement of government machinery. I mean, in in full force behind this project that we are seeing now. I know we were distracted by the politics and uh, the, the elections. Yes, I know naturally but, that is. Uh, but but the president did an individual uh, reason, which is commendable. But don't you think the government should take an even firmer and more pronounced and aggressive role in pursuing this? Uh, fundraising if, if uh, that, 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 that is happened because you know the government must realize that this is one endeavor that is huge you know I, I, don't, I don't mind telling you that for some people the election is nothing <laughs> qualifying for the nation's cup of is course. far more pressure mm. yeah, because it encompasses everybody yeah. Yeah. it's a unifying factor and, and, I, and, I, and, and I want to concur with you out there because yes mm. it's possible mm -hmm. but most of these things are privately driven mm. Mm. and supported by government Yes, yes, the national the national I mean team is a government thing. Belongs to government. Government funds it, but belongs to the public. Belongs to mm. you and me. You are the you and me are the ones running after the national team, at the stadium. Government is just you know I mean a handful, but it's about us, and we are the ones speaking more of the national team than the government. Government just provides and allows us to function. We are the ones hitting. We are the ones howling. We are the ones you know I mean. So it is our call. Remember our game against Algeria. Where are all those people? That yeah. almost right. they flooded the, uh, they, they, they let uh, them flood these accounts right now. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> that's yeah. how it the polls with climb the polls with the Dallas and drop them in the stadium. They, yes, absolutely. and we are fine, absolutely mm. fine for that. So let us be fine, let us find more money because I, I mean, ironically, <laughs> they, they were craving for, 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 for just this. a match. And, and now, now it's a tournament. It. Yeah. This, is what, a this, tournament. Is, this is what you wanted, and you yeah. got it, and you you you, you, you put your hands back. Off. Yes, mm. that, that's I mean, how it's, it is. But anyhow, we we so believe, champ. But also, uh, like I keep yeah. saying, I know uh, Gambia is a football-loving nation. I know Gambians love their scorpion. Absolutely. I am optimistic. At the end of the day, Gambians will come out in their numbers to contribute financially towards our maiden participation in Cameroon. I am so sure, and I know you can do it. Let's remind them of the 2888. Keep dialing, call, buy your credit, call 2888 or send a message. You have simply donated uh, to the national team by sending SMS or, 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 or calling 2222, deposit in the Afri money account. Come out in your numbers. I will repeat this from now to until the team leaves this country for mm -hmm. Cameroon. Mm -hmm. I am sure Gambians love the Scorpions. They Absolutely. love their Scorpions. And they I am so sure that you're passionate about the team. Yeah, it's in your pocket, sports. and I know you will drop it in the yeah. box. Only I mean, for the national team. <coughs> not for Musa Sisi, not for Sadibu, not for Lamin Jam, not for any other person's sake, but only for the sake of the team and for the love you have for country. And I'm sure they will do it. I think what I'm we need to work hard in, in our country is to <laughs> mobilize the... Uh, our citizens towards patriotic and national that causes. That's part of civic We should be that's civic 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 civic. Civic. <laughs> we also, yeah, because, you know, <laughs> sports is a passion. If you don't have it, you it's a problem. It. You know, you, you regard it as something. I think, I think it's like, because of the person. Mm. Sadebu would leave home every everybody day and get home late. <laughs> it's a passion. Musa does I mean, the same thing. The story is you been, know, driving their cars with their own fur, leaving their private business, like people like Sadebu. It's the person that you drive see, them to do this. We have and I'm of, sure there are Gambians out there. Our attitude to sports have make it no, difficult. Musa, uh, Mr. Cham, yes. our, okay. As Ida said, Gambians love sports. Absolutely. Yeah, they but do. But the word you mentioned here, the patriotism, Musa has been drumming this. Exactly. This thing, these, they, our young people go to video clubs. Yeah. Yeah, dude, they go to video more clubs, more spending I mean, every fifth. Complain about the cancellation of the Premier League matches. You know, <laughs> you you well, could course. see people tweeting about you know when UEFA did the draw and there was you know there the was United a glitch. glitch. They had yeah, to change. Nice you know, everywhere. there was so much attention about that. 
what people spend money to go and follow upon the Barcelonas, the Real Madrids, and the Chelsea's, the Bayern Munich. You know, now we have ours. Our own. Even our 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 our, our journalists here. With all due yeah, respect to absolutely. them, yeah. I please, want to see them. Please, I've challenged them. Yeah. About the tournament. They spend please. much more time Challenge talking about the international about. sport, and yeah. they'll spend maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes, talk well, about yeah, the coach has selected his professional. Yes, and then the international. I would want to see you debate on it absolutely. the whole absolutely. time. That's you know, true. if they all do that, That's all their true. programs from now on, let us suspend all that international sport and focus focus on, on this out. every day. Nyatengen dugal yende nyundile nyamangum. Everybody would hear because if other people are telling you they cannot hear it, like I tell people, man, that's supposed to be the job. You know, the, I am, so I to, 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 so I'm, I'm, I'm saying this thing and I'm putting my neck on the line in here. I mean, I, 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 just to make sure this, I have to put this thing in the sports page group. That's henceforth everything that we talk about. Yeah. We should, should talk about. Yeah. Should, has to do with us. So the campaign. Yeah. How do we move this yeah, thing forward? And I hope we're being heard. And I, as we are done here, tomorrow is Sunday. Monday, this is going to be a mail release that's going to go on the SJAG page. Mm -hmm. That everything that we should be talking about now, right now should be the tournament, should be, the tournament, yeah, should be the our team, our participation, our fundraising. Yeah. That's what we're not talking about. It is about us. Exactly. Let's forget the United. United has nothing to do with point. us. It Barcelona has nothing yeah. to do with us. The next three exactly. weeks should be road to Afcon. Complete. Period. Absolute. All of them now. We, we, we challenge them. Exclusively. That's what we. That's Whoever what tunes whatever sports station waiting to hear about Real Madrid or Chelsea so, or Barcelona, you hear road to Afcon. You will listen because you're waiting yes. to hear about Chelsea the whole day. In mm. fact, you, uh, in fact, if you realize most of the newspapers, look yeah. more like I do. For I, example, I don't. Yes, I, I hate to put international sports. <laughs> certainly, <laughs> certainly, no, certainly. Because you know, I know because. I mean, once it is played, everybody and knows about it. I'm sorry, it, it doesn't make it's sense. All, it's, it's on the internet. Mm -hmm. They bring it back to the back <laughs> when there are locals. Doesn't make it's sense. Still. That's what it's still. Mm -hmm. I mean, still. nobody. You should bring your own right. into, into yeah. the notice of the people. And so we challenge them. And the last time, I also challenged people, institutions, establishments. Let us paint the country red, white, blue, white, oh, green. No. Exactly. By now, the noise, the euphoria, the atmosphere should all be geared towards the road oh, to Afcon. Yeah. Before the elections, there were the yellows, the greys, yeah. the the pinks, the yeah. blues, and Fine. all those colors. Mm. T-shirts were all over the place. Absolutely. Let us don the national colors. Let us, you know, let us do these things. Absolutely. The artists too. Yeah. I yeah. want to crave their indulgence. Yeah. If they can come together, mm -hmm. do like a thing because they have a very strong followership. Very, very strong. So yeah. if very they big. do something, you know, yeah. like come do jingle, not Musa doing his, mm -hmm. doing mine, either doing hers. They can come together. We've seen you even know, Senegal. There, 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 there's, a, there's, 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 there's something. We have a problem in the Gambia where people want to wait until they are called. Mm -hmm. You know, even as you speak here, they will say, uh, 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 But who did they contact? Can you imagine? Did they enlist uh, mm -hmm. artists into their country? No. no, they did not. So you see, and you cannot remember everybody. Everybody should take it as a duty of to, to take part. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why the problem is so uh, we have And it. I mean, that's even, I mean, I'm going to say this because I'm. Some of these artists were even asked to do um, a teaser, a, v, a, a mm. TVC, yeah. Yeah. a TVC, just to appeal to the public. public mm. yeah. Some of the personalities, and they were not even still. They would not budge. Look at it. They would not budge. They would not. They, they cannot even see the country that you know what I'm yeah. supporting. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask exactly. people to this come and support. Some of them would still. Ah. So the other time, Musa, we were on TV. Somebody yeah. called. Yeah. He said, "Man, all my halis they were nyan." Nyan. That's yeah. what they have. Yes, yeah. interesting. That's yeah, what you can yeah, offer. The yeah, artists, yeah, even yeah, if the yeah. artists we know, they all fill the stadium when they have Absolutely. their programs. Millions, the open yeah. mics and the like. You don't yeah. have anything if to give. Appeal to the public. Send yeah. an audio in your WhatsApp I forum or your message. Instagram. Yeah, this is Road to Scorpion. Yeah. Be like yeah. Big Far did when or, he came to Jihad. Or in fact, yeah. or in fact they can stay a concert for the Scorpion. Get their yeah. overheads and give the, the rest of the money to this. Company. Yeah, but I mean, they, they can organize that. They, they can, can be organize their own call, But what was happening is that on our own um, thinking and planning, we had some artists together who were supposed to perform. I mean, as part of their contribution towards thing as a fundraiser, mm -hmm. everything and uh, all the proceeds were supposed were, were going to do. It, I mean, yes. given to the NCC. NCC. But unfortunately, it couldn't hold. Mm -hmm. But we're still moving on. We're still okay. moving on. We're not giving up hope on that event. We believe it's still going to take place in yeah. a different fashion. Okay. And uh, hopefully, by in the middle of the week, we should be able to confirm that. But it's going to be a very different thing, and it's going to be spectacular, most definitely. And we believe that's going to be the, I mean, the stroke that broke the camel's back. So that that's going to be a, a, a concert. You you talk about. Uh, uh, let, let's talk about the. Ceremonies that will be uh, in the lead up to the departure uh, from now on. What does the calendar look like? What's going to happen? Um, the calendar, we, we just, I mean, we were with the team manager earlier on, and I um, mean, the calendar, for example, next week would entirely be a, a road show in which we're going to whip support for the national team. 
I, uh, I hope in, we can in the form end of this. A caravan, or a, a caravan. Okay. yes, in the, in the form of a caravan, we, we, we want to use. I mean, I was thinking of using the fans club mm -hmm. to dress them banjo to become a you know whipping support, uh, creating sensitizing the public as to the avenues in which they can all go and support mm -hmm. and contribute. Mm -hmm. That's we're going to start it on Tuesday, mm -hmm. Monday. With the, the vehicles will be branded. We'll set them up, roll them with the Jeff bus, with the branded I mean truck, we'll loaded with supporters. Mm -hmm with a loudspeaker, you know, just to make sure that everybody, don't tell us I've not seen them or I've not heard it because we know that people will see yeah, them. Yeah. <laughs> and we want everybody to kill that out. Yeah. yeah, That will be happening for the whole of next week, three okay. good days we want. Okay. Um, we have the Teleton on Thursday. Yes. That is going to galvanize the That's Teleton you intend to synchronize all, all the, the media. Yes. All the all, electronic all, media. All, all the electronic media, yes. We, yeah. Everyone has agreed as we speak. Everybody bar, has agreed. Bar, 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 bar paradise right what now. What time? 6 to 8 p.m. 6 to 8 p.m. From GRTS Live. Okay. Six, uh, we'll invite, I mean, personalities and of course, but more importantly, all that we want the public to do, if you want to come in, just tell us that I want to give a million dollars. Mm. That's, so all that's you want going to, give. to be the entire electronic media in the country. Yes. Mm -hmm. So nobody can miss that. Uh, of course, some people will still say they will miss nobody it. So can miss <laughs> you that. never unless, know. Unless those who are dancing. Uh, yeah, anyhow, whatever. I mean, we just uh, saying I, this, but I we'll publicize it also in the papers, in the social media and everything so that it can be followed. Yeah, so your so we, we can also take it up from there. Your yeah, father is, is sure. informed Hopefully, already. Hopefully, yeah, throughout your so uh, programs from now until on Thursday. Very good. We also, some of the players are actually home right now. I mean, some some are here, we understand. You know, according to team manager, um, but the plan is that um, the team will be leaving here for Qatar 28, 29, 27, 28, 27. So they, 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 the squad will assemble here. No, some of them. Oh, some some of them. The ones assemble. here will leave from here to yeah, those Qatar. Those here will go. Yeah, those, those will others, will others would leave from their from bases their to ca to Qatar, Qatar. You know, and then they will converge there. The first match, I understand, is I mean confirmed with Algeria on the first yeah, of yeah. January, 2022. Mm -hmm. There is a second match. I also understand. Fourth, fifth, which they are just almost finalized. Yeah, it's finalized. And that's against one of the Arab nations. You've got this Arab Cup going on there. It's, it's fin I think Arab Cup no, final. The second game is not against an Arab nation. Okay. I think, but it was possibly because I think it was Egypt, Togo, or South Sudan. But that will still be in Qatar. Yes, Qatar. yes, yes. And then, and then the team will fly here on the sixth. January, yeah. Jan sixty years. Okay. I mean, because the the game was the, that game was reported supposed to be played on the fifth, okay. but we cannot fly out on the fifth and be here. But hopefully on the on the, the on the on the sixth, mm -hmm. and then be here on the sixth. Mm -hmm. And there should be proceedings in terms of the handing over of the flag Black, uh, by the president, president. and then a mega send off uh, I mean, for for the team because officially the team is supposed to be in in Cameroon on the seventh. on the seventh. So seventh. yeah, I'm on the, I'm, I was made to understand that if it's a four hours flight, Banjul <sighs> Banjul Cameroon. Oh, that's right. you know, yes, so so like we can leave here anytime two, three, four, and be in Cameroon in time, mm -hmm. and get ready for the battle proper. This is I think this is I mean tentatively what this we what we gather from the team manager. Yes, oh, and then okay. we're we're just tying the loose ends with the the gala dinner okay. for the corporate. Okay, you know, it's, it's going to be for the corporate. Unfortunately, we may not be able to have everyone there because mm -hmm. of the way it, the place that we intend to do it. We're just waiting for confirmation. Mm -hmm. So there'll be a gala dinner okay. on the seventh. Seventh. Oh, no, on so the sixth. No, on the sorry, sixth. Okay. on the sixth. Sorry, yeah. at a prominent place that I am sure. Yeah. A prominent place that I am sure. Yeah. yeah. Most of these corporate institutions will be trying to get there. To get there. Yes. Ah, then that's <laughs> yes. That's what we're just trying to try we all the loose to, ends and get to, confirmation. We don't want to let the cat out of the bag. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Okay. There we go uh, for the show today. Ida Bar from the National Sports Council and a member of the National Coordinating Committee for Gambia's participation in the Africa Cup of Nations. Sadibu Kamaso, also from the NCC, and spokesman Musa Sise. Thank you very much for you all for being on the show. We will be back with updates uh, from the NCC from now on to the departure of the team on the 7th January. I think our first match is in on the 12th against Mauritania. Is it? Yes. Against Mauritania. So look out for that. That'll be interesting month ahead. Uh, the new mm. year is packed with football, excitement mm. from Cameroon. Just imagine how you will feel <sighs> sitting behind your screen and looking at your nation I'm playing in you. you know, the, the big boys okay. club for the first time. Mm. That's, that will be interesting. That is something that nobody should miss. Mm. All right, we're back next week, inshallah. Thank you for now. Okay.
Universal data, now even better. Enjoy 20% extra data on all Gamacel data bundles. Buy 20 megabytes and get extra 4 megabytes. Buy 50 megabytes and get extra 10 megabytes. Buy 100 megabytes and get extra 20 megabytes. Any amount of Gamacel data bundle you buy, you will receive 20% extra data for free. Dial star 302 star. Data amount hash. Or go to your Yaibor menu and choose your data bundle now. Gamacel data is fast, lasts longer and very reliable. Gamsil Yai Borom. For all your pastry, bakery and quality food, CK Restaurant is the only place to be. We do catering for birthdays, weddings, and all related services. We have all kinds of local foods, American, European, and even beyond. Come and have a taste of our local juice Ebe and other services. At CK Restaurant, customer satisfaction is our priority. Planning to have an uninterrupted electricity and water supply from solar energy in the Gambia and beyond? Worry no more. Because Solar Enterprise will provide you with the solutions at reasonable cost. We have experienced personals who can install and advise you about your electricity and water supply with a warranty period. We have good quality solar products from North America and Europe. We provide services and sell products to individuals, organizations, institutions, private offices, communities and government. These products are solar panels, batteries, charge controllers, inverters, water pump, water heaters, freezers, submissable pumps and general solar accessories. Visit our stores at 48 Kairaba Avenue and Brusubi Highway or you can call us on 7657-479-980-8483-340-9400 or 635-9906. We live in a day and age where technology is creating a world without borders, filled with unlimited potential to improve the lives of the people around us. Innovarex Global Health ushers in a new way of leveling the playing field with increased access to quality healthcare services delivered at your doorstep. Our qualified professionals are equipped with state-of-the-art point-of-care testing technology to conduct tests such as kidney function, liver function, electrolyte tests, body composition, hemoglobin, A1C, and many more services with the highest efficiency in delivering results. The addition to our flagship Wellness on Wheels, more fondly known as WOW Delivery Service, brings the entire clinical experience full circle. IGH has remained committed to creating the future of healthcare delivery. Gone are the days of sending loved ones outside the country for basic medical services. Innovarex Global Health offers a new peace of mind and takes pride in delivering the quality of care we all deserve.